Big story uh, that we've been covering and continue to cover for you. Republican lawmakers calling on Congress to cut the lifeline to General Motors and just let the automaker file for bankruptcy. Seems like we've heard a lot more of that in recent days as the members of the president's uh, task force, his auto team, prepare to meet today with GM and Chrysler executives in Detroit. Now, that visit for those task force members uh, will feature some of the, the vehicles under development to, to help secure nearly $22 billion in more federal loans and reduce emissions. For more conversation on this, I'm actually joined here in studio by Republican Congress, Congressman Thaddeus McCotter of Michigan. He's here with us in our New York studio again. Uh, Congressman, thanks very much for coming in. We appreciate it. Thanks for having Tough me. Tough spot right out there in Detroit today. I mean, what kind of conversation do you expect from the likes of Steve Ratner and Ron Bloom and other members of this, this task force? What can be done to prevent a bankruptcy filing if that's what the, uh, the goal is? Well, I think we've already seen the auto companies put forward a very tough restructuring plan on themselves, where again, in Detroit, our best case scenario is 50,000 people lose their jobs, yeah. plants close, and a bridge loan comes through. So many of the Republican lawmakers from my own party that seem so sure. callous to the suffering of these workers seem to be stuck in a 1970s mindset that the quality of the cars isn't there, that the labor relations aren't You're talking there. about Senator Shelby, who's been very vocal, and there have been others as well. Some have said these are geographical arguments that the southern members of the party that are in, in non-union states, a lot of the times uh, where the foreign automakers, some of the Japanese automakers are based, that they're arguing for a bankruptcy filing, where someone like you a Republican who ordinarily would re would believe, I'm sure, in free market principles because you're from Michigan, is arguing against it. What do you say to that? Well, I believe in a humane economy. As I remember, it's not just America, it's not just Michigan's cherished way of life to have a manufacturing base and to have an arsenal of democracy and, the, God forbid, the event that we need one. Yeah. So what you're seeing across the board is the continued economic emphasis of the party, which is fine. But if you don't understand that working people are real people, that legacy costs are real retirees that have pensions, you will wind up talking to an audience that will be deaf to you because they know that those who propose creative destruction for others rarely apply it to themselves. Right. So the, in this particular instance, though, the fear is that if you do keep giving the money, essentially good money after bad is a lot of the way, ways that people have put it, that these automakers are just going to come back and need more of it. Why not have them file with government backing, whether it's 40 or $50 billion, whatever the case may be, have them come out as a stronger industry. I know that would be a lot of jobs, but take the pain in the short term to have a longer term, more viable U.S. auto industry. Well, two points. First, even polling has showed that if a company, the auto company goes into bankruptcy, 20% may buy a car from one of them. So if they go into bankruptcy, let's be under no illusion. They're going to be gone. The hundreds of thousands of workers in Chrysler, in GM, within the manufacturing supply chain, the dealership chain will be gone. Now, a strictly cold-blooded analysis of this, if you continue to give bridge loans to the restructuring auto companies. The one entity that is restructuring in exchange for taxpayer loans is the auto industry, not state governments, right. not the banks that we've seen or AIG. If you tell them no, you are going to incur, according to Moody's, about $200 billion into your social safety net. Those are transfers from the taxpayers to individuals who are suffering that are not loans and will not be paid back. So even if you're looking at it as a simple cost-benefit analysis, it is far more intelligent right now to try to help these companies survive, recognize the restructuring rather than simply turn to the taxpayers and say, okay, you're on the hook for $200 billion. All right, let me, help me to reconcile some of your positions on the issues if you can. You voted against the stimulus plan, right, that was mm -hmm. presented by the President, by the Democrats in Congress, that that gives, a, you know, 780, almost $800 billion uh, towards a number of different projects. However, you vote in favor of helping these automakers in your home state. Self-interest just in that case, or is there an economic principle involved? Well, as the Detroit Free Press reported, the stimulus bill does little or nothing for the auto industry. Secondly, the stimulus bill is not a loan that can be repaid over time. This is a trillion dollars that is a government stimulus package that will do little for real working people on a sustainable basis right. to get the economy going, to free up the credit markets, which is the crux of the problem that the auto companies are having. For example, Toyota asked the Japanese government for a $2 billion loan because of the problems that they're experiencing with auto sales due to the credit market. Now, I don't hear Senator Shelby and others saying that Toyota is making cars the Japanese don't want to buy. Right. So, but, but the point is, I mean, you're, you're still one of the few Republicans in Congress, and again, from Michigan, that's making this argument, right? I mean, you, you're, you must be, the conversations must be interesting within your own party. Are you making any progress when you make these arguments to the people in your own caucus that are, you know, that oppose you on this? Well, I think it's the more they realize that it's an extended chain. It isn't simply a geographic regional. You have manufacturing throughout the United States. You have car dealers throughout the United States. You have people that will be hurt, taxpayers who will have to bear the cost of the expanded social safety net. But again, I go back to the simple fact 
The Republican Party has to get back to understanding that working people matter, that these are your voters, these are your constituents, and you can talk global to local all yep. you want, but if you can't communicate to people in your district that you give a damn about them, they won't care about you. Well, well and you're, it, it's, that'll be my final question about people in your district. I've been reading some, some items lately that the Democrats that uh, are planning their c campaign for the midterm elections in, in 2010 will be heavily targeting your seat. They say the support for the auto industry is not possible popular within your party, then maybe there's another Republican who can run or whatever the case may be. Uh, what's going to happen in 2010 and uh, do you think politically, how does this, how does it, I know that's a sensitive area to talk about certainly when we're in the middle of, of helping people economically, but politically, how does your positions, uh, position you for re-election? Well, the beauty of it is I don't care. I was elected to represent these people to the best of my ability in the politics I don't care about. So you'll let it go no matter, let it, let it fall, the, the chips fall as they may. That's what we're supposed to do. It, it is what you're supposed to do. So and that's I intend a, to do it. That's an admirable position, uh, Congressman. Thank you very Thank much you. for uh, sharing it with us today, Congressman Thaddeus McConnor. Thanks for coming in studio. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you in person. It's always easy.